안녕하십니까? Nicolas, in the end, last year on Facebook Connect 2021, Facebook changed its name to Meta, and Mark Zuckerberg showed us his vision for the Metaverse. We saw very promising concepts and cool looking demos of how the Metaverse would look like, and I, for one, was very excited. One year later, and after spending more than $10 billion on this year's Meta Connect, we got to see how much progress Meta has made on building the vision of the metaverse that was announced a year ago. And although there are two announcements that I'm very excited about, I did expect something a little bit better after $10 billion spent and 10,000 employees working on it. The biggest thing that was announced was the Quest Pro a new high-end VR headset with a price tag of $1,500. This headset is more aimed as a productivity device rather than something to only play video games with. The coolest feature about the Quest Pro is the color pass-through. Pass-through is the ability to see the space outside of the headset when the user is wearing the device. This allows for more mixed reality experiences that I personally like more than VR. VR is cool and all, but it makes you completely disconnect from the outside world. With full color pass-through, you can still see the outside world and add a layer of digital content to it, which is where I think there are a lot of possibilities. This unlocks experiences like the ones you can see on this video, where instead of having real monitors, you can just wear the headset and have as many screens as you like. Artists could also take advantage of that as well as people in all different sorts of jobs. On this year's MetaConnect, you can really see Meta trying to position VR as not just a toy, but as something we will use for work. Meta partnered with Microsoft to bring Microsoft Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, as well as Microsoft Windows 365 to the Quest. They also announced Xbox Cloud Gaming and the Xbox Game Pass coming to the Quest, and they also said that gamers will be able to connect and play with their Xbox controller, basically using the Quest as a giant private screen that they can play on at any time. Avatars are also getting better. They are becoming more expressive thanks to the face tracking of the Quest Pro. You can see here how they can tell when someone is talking, moving their arm, or even eating. They also now have legs. Last year, avatars were just floating legless torsos, which makes them look a little bit creepy. But they will now have legs, which according to Mark, is a surprisingly hard thing to do. Another cool thing that they showed us, but that is not ready yet, are super realistic avatars. They are called full body codec avatars, and even though they are not ready yet, they look really, really cool. They are also much more expressive than the current ones and they can capture things like frowning your eyes, moving eyebrows and more. They also support different lighting which makes them way more realistic. Personally, I don't see myself using VR to attend work meetings if it's not using avatars like this. Because generating these kinds of avatars takes a long time, they are not ready to be used yet. But there is something called instant avatars, which are a little bit lower resolution compared to the others. But if you have a phone, you can scan your face and wait for a couple of hours and you will be able to get the instant avatar ready to use on your phone or VR. Now, even though the announcements so far haven't been mind blowing, there is a prototype of a project that I think is super cool and I hope it succeeds. There is a headset different from the Quest that is secret because they didn't show it to us that has a motor neural control. As you can see on this video, just by moving your thumb, you can check your messages and by turning your hand, putting your fingers together or letting them go, you can even take a photo. Here, you can see how this motor neural control is being used to play and move a character in a game. It can be trained to learn and detect the tiniest movements a hand can make to get something like what you see here, where the person is controlling the character on the game with almost no hand movement at all. This, I think, is incredibly cool, and it is the thing that I am excited about the most. Now I want to know what you think. What do you think of the metaverse and what do you think of what Meta is doing? 
I have seen many people online mocking Mark and being very cynical of what he's trying to make. But I personally remain optimistic that one way or another, the innovation and the R&D that is being put on this space is eventually going to trickle down and benefit all of us. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot is that unlike last year, this year, NFTs were not mentioned at all, which is interesting. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments the answer to those questions. What do you think of the metaverse? Do you think it's BS? And what do you think of what Meta is doing? Do you think they're crazy? Do you think they're going to succeed? I'm very curious to know what you have to say. Please leave the comments below and I will see you there. And don't forget, as always, if you want to learn to code and you want to do it for free with me, click the link below and I will see you there with many, many free courses that you can take right now for free. See you on the next one. Stay free. Kamsamnida. Bye-bye.